You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, guys. It is red hot and ready, and today we're heading down to the beach. We're having a beach party, okay? We're bringing out all the big guns. We got our trout, we got our mussels, we got our squids. Where'd we get the squids? We got them at the beach, of course. And here at Red Hot and Ready, we never make any mistakes. Things always go really smoothly. <laughs> Especially for John. So today, we're going to dig really, really deeply and try and find some of our less than shining moments to make you laugh. We're going to fix up a mess of food for your beach party, all built on things you can find around the beach. You know, like tomatoes, green onion, mustard, and butter. Welcome back to the beach party, guys. Just, I don't know, I don't know what you do at your beach parties, but we do this like fools all day long. Yeah! That's all you need to know about beach parties, truly. Not. You need some nourishment, some sustenance, if you're going to continue doing that all day, the way we do. Right? Okay. What do we got? We got trout, we got squid, we got mushrooms, we got green onions, we got onions of the regular nature, we have mussels. And if you're smart enough, and you're wise enough, and you have the energy, you can find all of this at the beach, okay? Oh, forgetting one thing here. We got lots of salt, okay? What we have to do is we have huge, 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 like, water catchments. We take this off, we arrive early in the morning, we get bucket after bucket of salt water, and we let it dry in the sun to produce this, the salt with which we're going to season and encrust or entomb, depending upon how it turns out, our trout. <laughs> okay, and the thing that's gonna make this truly a party at the beach is a drink, right? Sex on the beach. How about that? Yeah, wouldn't points. you like to know? <laughs> Toss a little bit of ice. We have one ounce of vodka. We got three quarters of an ounce of peach schnapps. We got two ounces of orange juice, and we got the diuretic of diuretics, one ounce of cranberry juice. And then we put the lid on. Then we put the lid on, then we put the other lid on, in that order. Then we shake. This is where actually that dance move came from that I was showing you earlier. Yeah, okay, that's what it's all about. You shake until it gets so cold that you can't hold on to it, and you have to drink it. A drink for all my friends. Cracker. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Cracker. How does that taste? Good. You coming to the beach party later on? Oh, yeah. Of course he is. Someone has to clean up. What? You know, the cranberry juice that goes in here? What that does, it cleans out your whole pee tract, man. Oh my god. It's a fantastic diuretic, but also clears up any sort of infection you got going on up there. Bar the ones you got from the one you shouldn't have been with. You know what I'm saying? I got it. I got it. Mm. Okay, just a second. I, I... This just in. An Australian mayor has defended the right of couples to have sex on beaches in Queensland, Australia. Mario DiMartini, Mario DiMartini says, he said he was responding to complaints that Whitsunday's new lagoon resort was being used for all the wrong reasons. He said, attractions, the attractions of sun loungers and the new lawn had made it only more comfortable to have outdoor sex. However, residents of Arley Beach blamed the young couples and the backpackers for the rise in this amorous behavior. Councillor DiMartini said, Hey, what's the matter with all these people, huh? There's no problem. Where I come from, we have sex everywhere. And I'll tell you another thing. I tell you, people have been having a sex on the beach since Christ was a cowboy, or at least very young. We've just made them more comfortable. Here on Red Hot and Ready, we tend to get a little spicy. Sometimes John gets a little raunchy, and us too, we even screw up. 
So today, for those of you who like to laugh at us, was it laugh at us? Cut, cut, cut. So for those of you who like to laugh at us, today we're gonna go behind the scenes and show you a couple times when we haven't really hit it right on the money. So stay tuned, because we're gonna show you some behind the scenes bloopers from Red Hot and Ready. We're back. Okay, guys, look, we have a trout here, okay? We're gonna do a fantastic salt crust for this, but what are we gonna serve with that? I think we're gonna do our old friend, Mr. Foil Pouch. That's right. Hello, Mr. Foil Pouch, how are you? I'm okay, thanks, John. Oh my God, how embarrassing. We got some nice button mushrooms here. We're just gonna do a little rough chop here, right? Okay, this should be enough to feed, you know, three or four people comfortably. Okay, we got this. Let's just start busting it down, huh? M make yourself a little bit of a container here, because we're gonna do this down and dirty. Put a mushroom straight in. Toss them in here. We're gonna put some tomatoes with this. Very simple. Just cut them on slices, cut them in chunks, cut them however you want, but just don't cut your fingers, right? Ouch. Okay, let's chop this up. Our green onions. Should be plenty. That's going to give it that nice sort of spicy bite. We got some mixed herbs here. We got thyme. We got tarragon. We got cilantro. We got a little bit of uh, parsley in here as well. Toss it on top. We got a whole lot of butter going on. That's right. Straight in there. Try to keep it in the center. It needs to get nice and juicy, buttery, fatty. You know, if it's not bad for your arteries. It's no good for your tongue. You understand what I'm saying? Plenty of black pepper. A little bit of coarse sea salt. Take your ends, push it up, pinch it together there, fold this over, fold that over, and it ain't pretty, but it's gonna work. I liked it. These guys are a lot of fun. Great at parties. A couple friends from school, you know what I'm saying? Dirty, dirty boys. This here is the head of Mr. Squid. So you just grab them here behind their eyes, and you pull their head off. Oh, look at that. That's all the goo. And you know, that's, that's not the technical word for it, but it sounds a whole lot better than guts. As far as I'm concerned, guts has been way overused. Okay, come on, let's use a little bit of imagination here, okay? What we need to do, take our knife, cut his eyes off and his brain, okay? You don't want anybody thinking around the fire. God knows I won't be. Ooh, look at that, what does that remind you of? Ninja squid, wow! <laughs> okay, now there's something inside of the body here, okay? Boomerang ninja squid. Okay, this is a quill. This is a piece of cartilage. There are no bones inside of this critter, okay? At this point, you squeeze down and you make sure there's no more goo left in it, right? At this point, it's cool. You start peeling off all this colored stuff on the outside of them, right? This is the skin, you know? On the tentacles, we will not be able to get the skin off. But however, on these, you will. Okay, process complete, almost. We're gonna cut this in little rings, just like you get at Bob's Calamari Shack, wherever you're buying your calamari. Okay, what we need to do is we need to blanch these squid, okay? What that is, is tossing them into hot water, boiling salted water very quickly. It's the same way they do it before they bread them up at all your favorite calamari places. So, let's get to it. I have some pre-cleaned squid here because otherwise this would just be called the squid cleaning show. Okay, check this out. We'll drop our squid bodies in. There we go. And we actually have our tentacles complete with eyes. Gross. <laughs> Cook them off a little bit of eye. And this won't take long at all. Okay. Give him a little stir here. Mmm. Squiddy. Beautiful. And we're just gonna strain them through a colander. Okay. Make sure all the hot water's out of this. 
just like that. Take over to a boil, a bowl of ice water. This is going to shock these things, right? <laughs> Probably not as much as cutting them and taking their heads off did, but it's going to stop the cooking. That's what I mean by shocking. Ice water, okay, beautiful. These are ready once again. And now I'll strain them into the colander. Okay. Back into the bowl. Got it? And these are ready for marination. So what are we going to marinate these things in? Well, I suggest we use what's on the table because I'm the barbecue master. And that would happen to be fresh parsley, about a quarter cup chopped, about two or three cloves of garlic chopped up coarsely. So this is going to be like a squid salad sort of thing, right? It's going to be very, very tasty. You know, you just dig in there with your hands or a fork or whatever you have. It's going to be really tasty. We got ourselves a little bit of green pepper here. Not very much, just maybe about a quarter of a small green pepper. Okay. Dump some of our lemon juice on to give it that tang that we like. A little bit of sugar just to counteract that acidity. Some fresh cracked pepper. And a little bit of salt, very little. And this, uh, this coarse salt is going to break down, okay? It's, gonna, it's not going to be crunchy or anything when you bite into it. That's just the nature of salt. It has a tendency to break down and dissolve. Good thing, huh? And a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And what we do, assuming that we didn't catch any squid at the beach, we do this at home. Throw it in a bag, keep it in the fridge until you're ready to make it to the beach. There we are. Squid salad in a bag. Anybody can do it. Simple as anything. Take it to the beach. This is party food. It's my kind of party. OK, so when we come back, we got it all happened. We got our mollusks. We got our fish. We got our salt. We got our sand. We got our water. Hey, it's an extravaganza of beachy goodness. You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's totally legal in Amsterdam. Legal in Amsterdam. Okay. It's legal in Amsterdam. <laughs> okay, fellows, we're back, and we were barbecuing this day. Of our animal friends. Panu, Catalan. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, I'm gonna head out. Okay. Basically the same salt content to the water that they lived in is the same. We basically want the same okay, water that they're gonna die in, okay? Ocean salt consistency content thing. Now I'm gonna start again. We basically want the same amount of salt in this pot. Okay guys, I've already salted. Okay, I've already told you that. When adding salt to the water, I went, mm. Tom Waker, can I get a little more salt? Special salt called tongue. <laughs> Special lady in your life. Good to you get it? Good, get it. Get it. Shut up, it's my turn. The center of the grilling <laughs> Stop laughing. The parents are coming over today. Oh boy. Hey, bud, we're going to make some stuff. Back to you. Back to you, John. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, parents, come on over to the house and we're going to cook trout. Oh, you were done? <laughs> That's right, your parents can come. I'm stressed. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. We've got Miles to show you how to build a fire from scratch. So stick around because we're smoking up. Man, I've been out here for days. It's cold. It's cold. That's right. Get the hell down. <laughs> Hey, it's just like, whoa, I think my balls just dropped. A little something about how to avoid the female ass whipping. <laughs> Squeezing the last of the life force from this help, help fish grape fliff. Looking go. into s and we're gonna be smacking them hard and making me some edible panties. Although, you know, my ass ain't that big, you know what I'm saying? I think you should don those little sweeties and give me a little taste test. <laughs> No, don't even think about it. <laughs> Guys, you're in the dog house. Dog house? Today, depending on what you found packed away in your. <laughs> depending on whatever you had packed away. In <laughs> oh my god, okay, I'm really gonna do it this time. Depending on what you found in your little brown bag. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> when I think of things packed away in little brown bags, it makes me laugh. Tee hee. How long do you want me to do this? <laughs> Spark it up, boys. Woo! Burn, baby, burn! <laughs> Today I've got Jeff Clark. Why am I saying? It's the meat guy. <laughs> I've got meat on my mind. Oops. Um, I mean. Okay. What we have to do is talk about lobsters first, and we're not talking very well about them, so we're going to go back and do this again. And what a better way to spend your Friday night than making homemade catch. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's hard enough. What? What's going on? And okay. what a better way to spend your Friday night than making homemade ketchup. Who doesn't make a homemade ketchup? <laughs> I almost joked on my dog. <laughs> good day. It was a good day. Welcome back to the beach party, guys. Hey, look, it's always better in the off season anyway, isn't it? No. Nipple season. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. We got our fish here. I don't know. I'm Mr. Fish. I'm going to put him straight down here. We're going to make our salt crust now, okay? This is so simple, man. We got some coarse salt here, got a little water. Poured us enough in to make a paste, okay? This is almost like making that playtime dough stuff that the kids are so fond of, right? Okay, this is just about perfect, okay? We had about four or five cups of salt. And we just put about half a cup at the most of water in here. Put a little base down here. Simple as that. Lay our fish on top. We grab the rest and we form a shell. Nice crust. And this is going to bake hard. It's probably going to end up like nice and brown on the outside. So when we go to look at our fish, we just crack it, break it off, and you got the most moist, perfectly seasoned fish. This is a... Uh, necessary to do when you have a fish with its skin on it. You wouldn't want to do this with a fish fillet because it would just end up being really, really, really salty because the, the salt would leach into the meat and that's not what you, what you want. All over it, basically creating no area for any of the moisture to escape. That's right, Pat. There are three peas. Nice beach weather. Wonder where all the chicks are. Price check on aisle 15, please. You're such a stud. I'm gonna throw it into a hot barbecue. Okay, we're up around 450 degrees, I'm guessing. Uh, we're at around 525. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this down and turn down the side that the fish is on. We don't want as much heat coming in from underneath it as we do from coming on top. It's like an oven we're creating here. Basically indirect cooking. We have our fish on this side, we got a heat come from this side, the heat comes up from this side and goes over, envelops it, creating an oven, it bakes it to a nice golden brown. Looking good, man. So come on back, we're going to crack this baby open, and after all, what is a beach party without a little bit of that fishy taste? It's all about the meat. As promised, guys, back at the beach party, we got our crusted trout. Look at this. Come on in, check this out, check this out. Knock, knock. Anybody home? Hey, maybe it's a fish. That's really bad. We got ourselves our mussels. These are blue mussels. Put them in a bowl. Add a few onions. Just slice them up. No big wank there, right? No. A lemon, we'll squeeze that in there. This citrus juice is going to flavor these things beautifully. And for a good measure as well, just chop up a bit of tomato, throw that in. Touch of sea salt right here. And what we're going to do now is going to take this and put it straight on the barbecue. So if you have a grate over your fire at the beach, this is what you do. Just dump it straight out, just like that. That's ready to go. And since you've been beachcombing all afternoon trying to build up this fantastic appetite of yours, you found some kelp or any kind of seaweed. Lay this straight over top of your mussels. And what this is going to do, this is going to steam it. Got that happening. We have our pouch of our mushrooms and tomatoes. That's going to steam. Make sure the heat's well up on that. Close this down. You've got about six, seven minutes. And this stuff is going to be 
unbelievably moist, tender. It's oh so soft. I promise you a salt crust. Let's check it out. Okay, take your knife. Gently crack it. And lift it off. Look at that. Beautifully moist inside. See, try to break it as little as possible. You don't want any salt sitting on there at the end. Try to brush the remainder of the salt off. Hey, Cracker, what time is it? Time traveling. Lift it out gently and place it on your platter. Didn't want that tail anyway. Continue just getting rid of the excess salt, because biting into that will just ruin your whole experience. The flavor of fish is one thing, but a mouthful of rock salt, not a very nice experience. Mmm, -mm. check this out. Whoa. Hey, darling. We got our beach blanket party. What muscle. is that on top of it? That's, a, that's kelp seaweed. We found it off the beach. We mm. threw it on top of the fire. And look at this. Our mussels have steamed up perfectly. It looks great. Mm. It smells good, too. Mm. Look at that over there. That was my salt-crusted salt crusted trout with foil pouch mushroom and tomato. Yeah, these we look good. Our, uh, our marinated squid salad beside that, you should try a little bit of that. As long as there aren't any eyes, I don't feel bad. <laughs> no worry of that. Not my squid. <laughs> good, very good. But what's on this? This is just a vinaigrette with lemon and olive oil and herbs. But check this out. I baked this in a salt crust, and look how moist and delicious it is. Mmm. Oh, man. I haven't had trout like this forever, man. This is great. We got our squid, we got our trout, we got our veg, we got our mussels. Mm. It's a beach party bonanza. Keep the sand out of your parts because this is red hot and ready. And we're the home of Smoky Good Eats. <laughs>